Joining us now, Clio Capital Managing Director Sarah Kunz. Clio is an early stage venture fund. It specializes in tech investments. It's always good for funds like your own and particularly perhaps even higher up the chain and later stage and sponsors to be able to access the capital markets. Um, Sarah, why do you think the fall could be a good one for IPOs? You know, I think that what we're seeing with with this Kava IPO, right, that valuation, which even though it's dipping a little bit today, you know, it had a blockbuster pop at the open. You know, that's making some real money for a chain that, you know, hasn't been around that long, doesn't have that many stores and isn't that big. And, you know, we've seen similar success with some of these other IPOs that have happened recently that the Johnson and Johnson spin out, you know, that did incredibly well, KeyView. And, and so I think that the reality is when you look at some of these IPOs, in the wings in tech, massive names like SpaceX, like Arm that SoftBank owns in the AI space, there is a real possibility that these could be winners this fall. Yeah, well, nobody's talking about SpaceX going public, I should say. So just to, just to put that out there, maybe Starlink, although who knows? That's total speculation. Unlike Stripe or Arm, which, you know, many people have talked about in particular, we're going to get Arm most likely later this summer, early fall. That's a big one. I mean, what about technology? Is it more important if we get one that succeeds in terms of its opening debut in technology as opposed to, for instance, fast casual restaurants? I mean, I think that there's a big difference in the business model, right, between ARM, which is is in the AI space and the chip space, and, and Kava, which is, you know, great, great feta dip, but not exactly high tech. And so, you know, the reality is that that I think, you know, there's a need for a tech IPO that lands, that works, that makes money for people. But these tech investors invest at such early stages that, you know, they don't need it to be this massive success for them to still make money and return it to their investors who have not seen any returns for quite a while. How does this change what you are willing to pay and for which uh, companies in, in various sectors? I mean, does Kava's debut make fast casual dining more attractive in your view? Because obviously there's a public market for it. I mean, I think, you know, you can look at other names like Sweet Green, things like that. I don't do a ton of, of restaurant and food investing. But, you know, we know that that fast, casual and quick, quick service restaurants are a growing, you know, industry and a growing space. And I think that people will continue to look. It's worth noting, though, that, you know, Kava actually during COVID had to close stores. So, you know, the 200 and I think around 63 stores they have now open, they actually had more open uh, prior to COVID and they've dialed that back. But they think that there's a path to get to a thousand open stores. They also sell their prepared dips in restaurants. So, you know, the reality is that they have a business model and a customer who loves them. And I think consumer companies that have that with some decent margins are, are potentially going to see some happiness in the IPO markets. All right. Well, we're looking forward to that if in fact happens. Sarah, thank you. Thank you.